Lawyers representing whistleblower Julian Assange have begun their final legal challenge against the Australian's extradition to the United States. Ian Woods is in London and filed this report after day one. So day one of this two-day hearing was all about the legal team of Julian Assange presenting their arguments as to why they believe he should get a full appeal and a full hearing to oppose his extradition to the United States on espionage charges. Tomorrow, uh, barristers representing the US government will try to refute their arguments and uh, suggest reasons why he should be extradited as planned. Now, as you can see, there's been a big noisy demonstration throughout the day. That's been fairly commonplace at uh, various court hearings over the years uh, for Julian Assange. This one's been particularly well organised because his supporters have even organised their own effective TV channels, streaming proceedings from outside the court all day with interviews and film clips uh, about the case. Inside the court, uh, there was great interest in how Julian Assange would look uh, because, of course, his health has been an issue. And as it turned out, nobody got a chance to see what he looked like because it was announced at the start of proceedings that even though he'd been given the opportunity to come to court in person or to watch proceedings via video link, he didn't do either because of ill health. Julian's in a very delicate, uh, delicate uh, state of health. Uh, he's had episodes inside that prison, you know, a mini stroke. Uh, he's been ground down by this process. Uh, he has good and bad days, you know, in terms of his, um, in terms of his mental health. Uh. Now, fellow Australian Jennifer Robinson has been representing Julian Assange for many years. She says that no extradition should happen because the charges he is facing essentially are a political crime. The two key arguments that have been outlined this morning by our council is first the fact that this extradition request from the United States is prohibited by the terms of the US-UK treaty which provides the very basis for the extradition request. You can't extradite someone under the treaty for a political offence and the Espionage Act and espionage is a political offence. So we say it's unlawful and an abusive process. The second argument we heard from our council is about the fact that Julian is being prosecuted for revealing US state criminality and that is barred by the Extradition Act. Well, 14 years after that first batch of U.S. classified material was released by WikiLeaks, 12 years after he sought asylum in the Ecuadorian embassy, Stella Assange, his wife and indeed uh, his lawyer for many years, uh, has been arguing that what happened last week in Russia to the uh, Russian opposition leader uh, Alexei Navalny has parallels with what she believes could happen to her husband. It's an attack on the truth and it's an attack on the public's right to know. Julian is a political prisoner and his life is at risk. What happened to Navalny can happen to Julian. Well, I asked the current editor of WikiLeaks whether that was a justifiable comparison. This is uh, what happened, can happen to political prisoners. Navalny died in, in a Russian prison in Siberia and uh, Julian Assange is slowly dying in a dungeon here in London. So when the legal arguments are completed in 24 hours' time, there is a plan for everyone who has been gathered outside the Royal Courts of Justice to march the short distance to Downing Street, the home of the British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak, to make clear their opposition to the extradition of Julian Assange. So there's going to be more arguments in court tomorrow, more demonstrations, more noise in support of Julian Assange.